truth science. As well as the standard fair use policy, this video is protected under the Treaty of Peace and Friendship, 1787. Moors are awake. We are taking our place on this planet. Islam Moors. My, uh, my nationality is Moors. All right, Officer Maloche. Good morning. Good morning. All right, and Miss Bay, can you hear me? Hello? Miss Bay, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Good. Yes. Okay. All right. I can hear you too. All right. This is 240P01688. This is the People versus uh, Lita Bay. Uh, Officer Malosh, would you please state your name? Yes, ma'am. First name Nathan, N A T H A N, last Malosh, okay. M L O C H E. And Miss Bay, would you please state your name? I'm the executor, executrix of the estate for Lita Bay. Ma'am, what in the doohickey are you talking about? All right, so we're here today for, looks like a ticket that was issued back on July 14th of 2024. All right, Officer Malosh, uh, it's the government's burden. So you'll go first, raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is truth it's the truth and nothing but the truth under the penalties of perjury? I do. All right. So what can you tell me about the ticket that was issued on July 14th, uh, 2024, uh, Toledo Bay at Coolidge and Pearson in the city of Oak Park? Yes, ma'am. The citation was issued uh, due to Miss Bay disobeying the red light at actually Coolidge and North End. Um, once we got through that intersection, Miss Bay did come to a stop at Coolidge and Pearson, and then once that light cycled through, I initiated a traffic stop just north of Pearson, just south of Albany, on Coolidge there at about approximately 10.45 p.m. Um, at that time, I wanted to speak to Miss Bay. Uh, initially, she refused. She did provide a license and eventually started speaking with me. Returned to my patrol vehicle, at which time she exited her vehicle, uh, went to the rear of her vehicle, opened up her trunk. Uh, went up to speak with her and escort her back to her seat in her car, at which point she started resisting. So my fellow officer and I took her to the front of my car, spoke with her, uh, initially handcuffed for officer safety. Uh, we released her without charging her for the misdemeanor civil or sorry, misdemeanor for resisting and obstructing. And we just went with the disobey red light. And actually at minute 158 of my body cam, Miss Bay does admit to the infraction of disobeying the red light, stating she had to use the bat. Um, when you say resisting, what do you mean? So initially we went up to her, asked her to step away from the trunk. Obviously, we didn't know what was in there. Um, she then began to retreat from officers. We then uh, grabbed her arm to help escort her to her vehicle, at which point she oh. tensed up her, pulled away, and started screaming at us. What do you mean by screaming? What did she say? Am I able to re reference my report I have here? You may. Thank you. See, initially she said, her finger thing. So much, she was you're breaking up. I can't. Oh, can you hear me now? I can hear you. Yep. Uh, all I have here is that she was kept screaming, help me. Um, initially, when she was in her vehicle, she stated she didn't want to speak with us and that we were forcing her to say things against her will and that she was nervous because we had our sidearms and we were near her children. Um, once she was resist resisting, all I have noted here is that she kept screaming, help me. And um, that's all I've got in terms of that. I don't have access to my body camera footage at this time. Why is that? Uh, this is a uh, virtual court, so I don't I don't have uh, access to evidence.com. 
I don't have um, a work computer, so I don't didn't know if it was appropriate to access mobily. All right, and Miss Bay, I'm the executrix for the um. Hi, I'm the executive executrix for the trust for we today. All right, Miss Bay, raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth and nothing but the truth under the penalties of perjury? I do. All right. What can you tell me about the ticket that was issued to you? Um, Your Honor, I, I actually put in paperwork and asked for discovery. And I was advised that um, I shouldn't testify until I get my discovery packet. So this isn't a criminal case. It is a, it's a civil infraction. You were free to order uh, under the Freedom of Information Act any information um, regarding this case prior to the hearing. Um, so it's not like a criminal case. It, it's a different standard. It's just a preponderance. It's not um, beyond a reasonable doubt. Um, but, but you most certainly would have had access to that if you if you just FOIA'd the report or the body cam in this case. Um, but we are having the hearing today, and you're free to give me your side of the story if you so choose. And you would know all of that had you just let a lawyer represent you. But no, you want to be a knucklehead. You want to come in with the Morris Sovereign Citizen script. Good luck with that. Um, On the day in question, um, I went through a red light. I had to use the bathroom, like really desperately. I had three teen teenagers in a car with me. And when... um. The officer, officers approached my vehicle, touching their sidearms. My daughter had my identification, had the identification, and I explained to them that this was a trust situation, and they didn't care. She was terrified, and she ended up taking out my ID because she did not want us to get killed or beat up or anything because um, things have happened to family members. I didn't want to get tased. She didn't want us to get tased or beaten or killed. So she ended up taking out my ID because I did not have to identify. It was no, it was not a situation for identifying, but we were forced to because of the guns and stuff. And my children were terrified. My son's girlfriend was in the car. He was terrified. I told him it was a trust situation. And I told him I had to use the restroom. And because he said something about me uh, going through the red light, which there was no traffic. The traffic light is to direct traffic. There was no traffic. I really had to go. And I was really trying to get to the destination because I have a medical condition that's life threatening right now. So I explained it was a trust and it, I, I, they, they went to the car and I got out to get tissue out my car, which I have a receipt and a picture that I did have tissue in my car. I was going to use the bathroom on the side of a house or wherever because I was not going to expose myself to waste matter with my blood condition. I, they came up to me and I was like, they was like, ma'am, what are you doing? They all rushed towards me. They all grabbed me. Then all of a sudden, somebody had their hands between my legs, brisket touching me, my breasts searching me. They pushed me up against the car. They put cuffs on me in front of my children. They put me in the back of the car. I was screaming for help. They went up to the car and they were taunting my son in front of his girlfriend and his little sister who looks up to him like. This lady's so pissed off, she can't even hold the phone straight. I said, I just had to use the bathroom. I asked him nicely. I said, can you please just sit me on the ground? I do not want to waste inside of your car. I wasted myself in my car once I got by in my car after they put me in the back of the car. So that's what happened on that day. And I asked the officers, how would you want your mother handled? I'm an older woman. And he did this in front of my, ch my children. I went to the temple earlier that day, a sacred in the Hindu temple, and did sacred rituals. Wasn't nobody supposed to be touching me. And somebody just came up to me and was touching between my legs and my breasts. And I don't know where they came from. And they were all surrounding me. Anything else you want to say, Miss Bay? I was screaming for help because I was terrified for my life. Stop lying. I was not guilty of anything, but needing to use the bathroom and not wanting to soil myself. I just wanted to get to my destination, which was off of Oneida and Nine Mile, which literally. 
two minutes away. I did not make it. Okay. All right, the court has heard the testimony from Officer Malosh and from Ms. Bay in this case. The standard is a preponderance of evidence. Uh, Mr. Malosh testified that he saw Ms. Bay run the red light at Coolidge and North End. Uh, Ms. Bay acknowledged running the red light at uh, Acknowledge running the red light in question in this case. Uh, the people's burden is satisfied uh, beyond a preponderance of the evidence in this case. I'm finding Ms. Bay responsible for running a red light. The fine is going to be uh, 165. You'll have until October 1st to pay it. Um, I will send that to the Novara address where we sent the other notices. So you'll get the paperwork in the mail. You're all set. Excuse me, Your Honor. So what I'm asking you is, let me have a qu I have a question. You're telling me, is it is the court telling me that trust Trust, um, trust situations are not seen as trust because this is a trust matter. This is not right, what so you're thinking. There's, there's no, there's no, there's no trust situation recognized by the court. You are responsible. Make sure you pay the fine by October first.